Taming the Demon by Alma Lovskiro. Chapter 2. The Five Second Wall and We Need Eleven. The kid's first practice wasn't exactly a memorable affair. Hiromu could tell on sight that Senna, the fat ass called him such, had regressed back into wimp mode. The blonde had expected such and therefore made the most of it, tying the brat up and dragging him around like a rag doll. The quarterback made a big show of talking to Kurita, yelling about broken equipment, and generally ignoring the small boy. In reality, he was paying very close attention to even the smallest of twitches in the boy's muscles, trying to catch a glimpse of that dark, ugly creature behind the shorty's two big eyes. Nothing. Running itself wasn't the key. And what the heck was with that first 40? Shrimp lit up after three steps. And setting Cerberus on him only made the kid cry. But that 4.2 seconds was worth every little one. What was it? Hiroma needed to be able to control the demon, direct it, channel it, but he couldn't do that if he couldn't tap into it. Didn't know the source. It was like Cerberus and food. Lack incentive, lack obedience. Wait a minute. Cerberus. The mutt would chase Senna for the dog biscuit down the back of his shirt. That was the plan. That was how it started. But when Severus went in for the kill, he didn't go for the brat's shirt. The dog went straight for his head. When in packs, male dogs would fight over who got to be the alpha. Usually, they were fights to the death, but occasionally, the loser would be strong enough or good enough to keep on as a beta and be spared after an appropriate show of dominance from the alpha. Severus wasn't chasing food. He was showing Senna, who was top dog, around here, meaning the mutt had seen or sensed the thing inside of Senna and deemed it a threat. Think, Hiruma, think. What are you missing? What happened when you looked down to check the stopwatch? In that one instant, what changed? The direction of the kid, that's what. When Aruma looked up again, Severus had caught the shrimp and was gnawing on his skull. But Aruma could see the brat's face because the brat had changed direction. Most would attribute this to the kid's running style, the way he moved, but that wasn't right. When choosing the flight option between fight and flights, a person automatically runs away in the opposite direction from the danger in a straight line. If the brat was turning while running, it means he wasn't fleeing. He turned, intending to fight back. There. Confrontation, probably stemming from a deep-seated rage at being the victim, was the key to Demon's Cage. This could be both good and bad for Haruma. Good, because when the rat gets tackled during games, he's more likely to get his scrawny butt up and run again than lay there and whimper. But it could be bad, because this kind of rage was very tricky to handle. Regular run-of-the-mill anger could be incited and then quelled in a matter of words and gestures, but this was old hate. The kind of hate that has been with you so long, it's ingrained in your soul, and you don't remember what being without it is like. That kind of hate can go from dead to inferno in less than a second in any given situation. The kind of hate won't retreat until it's been paid in blood. Hiruma was not afraid of a mere child, but he knew better than to be careless with the boy's handling. It may frighten the shorty excessively, but the quarterback would make it a point to keep the kid informed about most of his plans, at least the basics, for a while. Doing such would earn the kid's trust and convince him that they were on the same side. When the brat got used to the way Hiruma did things, the blonde would begin keeping his plots to himself again. But that was for later. Right now, the Devil Bites needed support players. The pipsqueak whined a lot. Hiruma wondered if he'd ever get used to that nasally sound grating on his ears. And why was he so hung up on being the manager? He'd never been on a sports team, so he wouldn't know how to do the job properly anyway. <laughs> Whatever. Hiruma planned to round up more than eight recruits anyway. He supposed he could throw his new pet project a bone. If the kid didn't want to run his first game, that was fine. He could stay a secret and take the extra time to learn the rules of the sport. He next saw the kid outside the basketball team club room. 
Little Brad had come racing up halls, seeming quite hyped up about his new task, only to tap short in front of the door. He stood there and fidgeted for probably a full minute before finally knocking on the door and stuttering out some pathetic excuse for a request. It was not surprising at all when he was turned down. Hiruma was relatively pleased that the kid wasn't completely discouraged and ran off to find others. After the fat ass left, the devil of Damon went to work. Back at the clubhouse, the quarterback was putting up chips to mark how many players he had recruited. The shrimp and the fat ass had gotten exactly zero between the two of them. Useless. When he remembered he had ran out of gum earlier that day and if he couldn't feel the craving coming on. So he left without as much as a word to the fat ass who was wailing about the lack of love for his favorite sport. He wondered what happened to the chibi, if he was still running around recruiting or if he got hooked into running errands again. Running errands, apparently. He saw the kid delivering newspapers on his way back to the school. If Aruma was the type to do so, he would have sighed in dismay at how easily this kid fell into old habits. In the end, it was the cherry on top of his rage cake because the store ran out of his favorite gum! You know this? Or maybe not. The newspaper running was part of a bargain for a potential recruit. The kid managed to put a chip on the board. Who would have thought? Not that it mattered, though, which quickly became apparent when Haruma put up the rest of his chips. But progress was progress. Determination had beaten out wimpiness in Senna this time and was likely to do so again. The brat was still pathetic, would be for some time, and Haruma was still trying to figure out how he could properly channel the kid's inner demon. But it was alright for now. The first game was tomorrow, and the fat ass had to suffer his penalty game.